come with me on a brief tour of what I learned about Fuzhou, China from a recent immigrant. Fuzhou is the capital and one of the largest cities in Fujian's province, People's Republic of China. It is located on the eastern coast of China and the core counties lie on the bank of Fujian's largest river, the Min River. The population of Fuzhou is 7,115,370 people, which was taken in 2009 by Fuzhou's government. It covers 4,634 square miles. Fuzhou has a humid subtropical climate influenced by the East Asian monsoons. They have a long, hot and humid summer and mild, dry winters. May is the rainy season, so not the best time of the year to visit. Late summer and early fall is when the typhoons are more likely. The temperature ranges from 51 degrees in January to 84 degrees in July. Fuzhou's history is not exactly known as to when it was originally founded. Uh, the, the first city wall was built in 202 BC when Hua Xu set up his capital here. The city was named Yi, which means beautiful, but the name of the city has changed many, many times, but there hasn't been much damage done to the city due to wars or natural disasters. During the Southern Song Dynasty, around 1371 AD, many scholars came to live and work in Fuzhou which it then became very prosperous. During the Qing Dynasty, Fuzhou became a Protestant mission field. The first missionary was Reverend Stephen Johnson. Protestants played a major part until communists took over in the 1950s, but they did leave a very rich heritage. The two traditional religions practiced are Buddhism and Taoism, and they are practiced together. Uh, the city has many monasteries and monks. With many of the religious practices, they incorporate elements of gods, totem poles, and many other legends. The Monkey King is said to embody the god of wealth after the novel Journey to the West, which was issued in the Ming Dynasty. The most popular religion in the Min River Valley is the worship of Lady Lin Xu. Mandarin Chinese is the prominent language spoken in China, but the local people speak Fuzhou dialect, which is said to come from the Ming Dong dialect. Now one of the fun things um, when I interviewed this recent immigrant to America was asking them what is most important to them and um, the mother and father both had the same comment was that value was family was the m most important thing to them the institution of family is the pinnacle of society this is a fact that has long been realized by the Chinese who hold the family bonds as sacred and honor them accordingly. The traditional family, the man is the head of the family and is the money maker, which in turn earns him the authority figure and ultimate say in family affairs. In current Chinese families, men still are the providers and have authority, but does not have complete control. The family is responsible for education, especially the father for teaching his child and making sure he or she gets a good education. My friend told me that um, women in China have um, three authorities. Number one, the father. Number two, the husband. And number three, the son, when the son is old enough to take care of his parents. Now, education is also something that is very important, especially in the larger cities. Boys are the ones who make up the majority of schools because the girls have to stay home to take care of their parents and take care of the house. 
Children go to school for nine years, similar to the U.S. first grade through ninth grade, and the government covers some of the cost. The remaining cost from the fa comes from the family, so the dropout rate is high in rural areas where the families cannot afford for their children to go to school. When this happens, usually the oldest boy will continue to go to school because he will need to get a good job to take care of his parents. The Chinese do have a social-oriented education system. However, intense competition at the school levels with children having to sit for entrance exams even at the junior most levels. Children are encouraged to gain mastery over any discipline that they seek to pursue. They do face a lot of pressure from their families because they will be in charge of taking care of their parents when they are older. Another fun thing that I got to do is ask about what Chinese taboos are. And um, not oddly enough, uh, my friend did not understand what a taboo was, so I explained to her what a taboo was and gave her an example of what I found from the internet of what a Chinese uh, taboo would be. And then she was able to understand it. And um, a book that I read from Sosa said, using the ELLs L1 to explain meaning of English words, it's an effective strategy. So I definitely found it effective by giving them an example of what I had found about a taboo. A couple of taboos that uh, she shared with me um, from traditional Chinese is that uh, children, or men and women, didn't cut their hair. So their hair would be very long all over their body, uh, their underarms, the head on their hair, their legs. And the reason they didn't cut it was because they felt like that was something that their parents had given them from childbirth. So as respect to them, they wanted to keep that and didn't cut their hair. Some other taboos would be, as you see in the picture, you are not supposed to stick uh, chopsticks in the middle of your bowl sticking up out of your rice because this was something that was done uh, at shrines as offering a meal to an ancestor's ghost. So you definitely wouldn't want to do that in a restaurant or out in public. Other facts about eating are that you don't want to leave your plate empty. You uh, don't want to eat everything on your plate like you do here in America because if you do at a restaurant, at a Chinese restaurant, that uh, tells them that they were not able to um, have enough food for you to eat and it would put a curse on the restaurant owner. Also, if you are eating with a group of people and you're sharing a dish, you don't want to use your chopsticks or your eating utensils. You want to use a serving spoon that would be provided for you. Another one, if you are calling somebody to you or hailing a cab, you don't want to have your palm up. You want to have your palm down and move your fingers as if you are sweeping something um, to you. These are just a couple of the um, Chinese taboos that I found really interesting. I really hope that all this information uh, is very helpful to you and that you are able to um, maybe visit Fuzhou, China at some point um, in your life because I definitely found all the information that my friend gave me about Fuzhou, China very interesting. Thank you. Hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.